we will now be discussing the opposite people okay uh, against the calvin people which i i consider the god's will okay now is very famous man who went against the calvinism the founder of Arminianism, his name is James Arminius. Who is James Arminius? Don't forget his name, Arminius. Okay. It, it's a different from the Armenians. Remember that, you know, you Persian people, you have Armenia, that's a different Armenian, a different uh, name. Now here, James Arminius, he was born in Holland, Dutchman. He was born four years before Calvin's death. See, four years before Calvin's death. That means when, okay, he is 55 years younger than Calvin. Around 50 years younger than Calvin. Now, he, Arminius, he was a disciple of Beja. This is just don't Theodore. You don't, you don't have to memorize the Theodore. His first name, but his last name Beja. He is also is a very uh, famous man. So don't forget the Beja. Okay. Beja, he is a disciple of Beja. Okay. Beja, he was a Frenchman. He, Beja, is also a disciple of Calvin. Calvin was a Frenchman. Remember? Okay. Also, Beja was one of the disciples of Calvin. So he's a Calvinist person. Now, Beja's disciple was who? Arminius. So, Calvin and Beja and Arminius. So, Arminius. Calvin, Beja, Arminius. Calvin, Frenchman, Beja, Frenchman. Arminius, Dutchman, Dutchman, Holland man. Okay? This tells us this Arminius must be Calvinist, right? Because his teachers, he is, uh, he, his teachers, his teacher Beja, Calvinist, and Beja also, student of Calvin. Got it? Therefore, Arminius was a Calvinist. He was a Calvinist. However, next is, is next person is a very, very important man. Okay? Now, it's Erasmus. Erasmus is a very, very important man. He was a top scholar. Very brilliant scholar. He is a Dutchman also, Holland man. But you see, you can see he died in 1536. That means around 1517 is what? Reformation. Reformation. So around 17, 18 years okay, after the Reformation, he died. In other words, this man, Erasmus, lived during the time of Reformation. Erasmus, Dutchman, he was a top scholar. So Luther, Luther, you know Martin Luther? Luther was his disciple. Okay? And this man, he was a, I say top scholar means 
he was a, a, at that time, during the time of Reformation time, most scholars got discipled by him. Because Erasmus, he wrote a Bible and he was an excellent scholar in Latin language and, and Greek language, all philosophy and literatures. He was a top scholar. Now, this man, he knew the necessity of reformation. Okay? So he associated with the Luther and all the, that time top reformers. Okay? But especially with the Luther, Luther, when he wrote the uh, Luther Bible, okay, Erasmus taught him. He guided him. So the Luther was influenced by Erasmus. Okay, he was a top scholar, I would say. But Luther asked him, why do not why do not you do not you did not participate in the reformation movement along with me he said you go ahead i will remain in roman catholic church okay within the church i will i will do my job as a reformer within that organization within the church so he did not change the church. That was his failure. Therefore, those reformers did not like him. You understand? Okay. However, this man's theology, he was, his man theology is free will theology. Free will. Because this man, he's a, he's a founder of the Free will, human free will, we call it volition. He was an excellent scholar that human has free will, volition, meaning this, meaning this, we are responsible, human is responsible for his own action. In other words, we have to do in order to receive salvation. Because salvation is available only for those who exercise positively, <clears throat> react positively with his or her own volition. Because God has given us volition, free will. So it is human responsibility with respect to how to exercise our free will in order to receive salvation. So, human has that dignity, okay? Human has that right and obligation to act towards God's, God's salvation gift. That human free will theology was created by who? Erasmus. Dutchman. That is totally opposite to Calvin's teaching. Okay? I hope you follow me up until here. Opposite to Calvin's teachings. Who is the gentleman's name? Erasmus. What country? 
Holland, Dutch people, Dutch men. Now, now later, Arminius, who was what Calvinist, okay, Arminius got influenced by Erasmus as a Calvinist, okay, and he was convinced by Erasmus. Yeah, human free will is very important. So with that spirit in him, Erasmus began to make questioning, questioning to Calvin's Calvin theology. Remember, remember the tulip, especially the tulip, among the tulips here, unconditional election. What was the unconditional election? Without your free will exercise, God will just unconditionally providing a person salvation. That is the Calvin's unconditional election. Nothing to do with free will exercise. Nothing to do with the free will presentation. Okay. No expectations of your, your free will exercise. That was a Calvin's unconditional election. Now, here in Erasmus, free will persons arguing this, then are we a robot? You know, robot? Robot? Okay. God has given us the free will. Why no free will involved in our decision making to gain the salvation? That is the first question that Almenius got in his mind. And the second question is limited atonement. Only those limited people Limited number of people will receive atonement means salvation. Okay? So that was also questioning. Not only that, the perseverance of the saints, what was it? Once you became a child of God, it goes eternally. No salvation cancellation whatsoever. So now this Erasmus free will influenced Arminius okay, raised up questions in three parts right here. Unconditional elections and limited atonement, perseverance of the saint. These three areas. Now, with that in his mind, he developed his own theology. It was not official at the time. Without okay, his official declaration on his theology, he discipled many students. Without establishing his own organization. Okay, no church, you know, no organization whatsoever. He just taught and, and producing his disciples. Then he died. He died in 1609 at the age of 49. That's the end of Anunius' life. Okay? The, in the next lecture, lecture number four, we will continue what had happened after his death? It will be interesting. Arminius, born in Holland, he was a disciple of Beja. Okay? Who is what? Beja is a disciple of who? 
Calvin. Therefore, Arminius originally, he was a Calvinist. But for some reasons, he got influenced by whose teaching? Erasmus' teachings, who happens to be the father of free will, free will theology, human free will. Okay? Upon got influenced by the Erasmus, he raised up questions on three points. Here, three points means conditional, unconditional election, limited atonement, and perseverance of the saint. So he taught that questioned issues to his disciples, not officially establishing any organization, just died. Okay, with some of his disciples. Then we will see what had happened after his death. We look forward to hearing that stories later in the next lecture. Hallelujah. Amen.